Hi, I'm Ruslan and this is another Unity tutorial. This video is provided by Mixel Studio. Mixel Assets includes almost everything from environments to characters, various locations and settings, from Middle Age to Deep Space Colony. So, I definitely encourage you to check out the Mixel page on the Unity Asset Store. Simply click the link in the description. Before we started, please subscribe the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Your support is important to us. Unity provides a variety of post-processing effects and full screen effects that can greatly improve the appearance of your application with little setup time. You can use these effects to simulate physical camera and film properties or to create stylized visuals. Without further ado, let's dive in. The built-in render pipeline does not include the post-processing solution by default. To use post-processing effects, we have to download the post-processing version 2 package. To work with post-processing, required Unity 2018.1 or later. To install package, open Package Manager. In the filter for scope menu, select Unity Registry. Select Post-processing. Now click Install. To enable post-processing in your scene, add post-process layer to component to the main camera. Blending assigns a trigger for a post-processing layer and controls which layer affects the camera. Trigger. This transform controls the volume blending feature. Layer. It allows you to control which layers affect the camera. Anti-aliasing reduces the appearance of jagged edges in your scene, but it can be resource intensive. Select options that fits your project. Stop NAN propagation. It destroys any pixel without any numeric data, known as not a numeric pixels. It then replaces each pixel with black color before applying post-processing effects. Directly to camera target. This option can be useful if you're targeting low-end hardware and post-processing is causing performance issues at runtime. You can use a volumes to manage and blend between post-processing effects in Unity. Each volume can either be global or local. They each contain scene settings property value that Unity blends between. The post-process volume component allows you to control the priority and blending of each local and global volume. Each volume has two modes. Global. It has no boundaries and applies to the whole scene. Local. It needs a collider or a trigger component attached to it to define its boundaries. Blend distance represents the outer distance from the collider surface where blending starts. Weight reduces the global contribution of the volume and all its overrides. Priority The higher this number is, the higher this volume is placed in the stack. Profile defines the profile for this volume. It darkens areas that are hidden from ambient light, such as holes and spaces between objects which are close together. Can be achieved in two ways, in real time as a post-processing effect or as baked lightning effect. The ambient occlusion effect in this package has two modes, scalable ambient obscurance and multi-scale volumetric occlusion. Scalable ambient obscurance is a standard implementation of ambient obscurance that works on older platforms. Multi-scale volumetric occlusion is optimized for consoles and desktop platforms. Intensity adjusts the degree of darkness. Radius set the radius of sample points which controls the extent of darkened areas. Quality defines the number of sample points which affects quality and performance. Color Set the tint color of the ambient occlusion, ambient only. Enable this checkbox to make the ambient occlusion effect only affect ambient light. Thickness modifier. Modify the thickness of occluder. This increases dark areas but can introduce dark halos around objects. The auto exposure effect simulates how the human eye adjusts to changes in brightness in real time. Filtering. Set the lower and upper percentages of the range that find a sustainable average luminance. Minimum and Maximum. Set the minimum and the maximum average luminance to consider for auto-exposure. 
exposure compensation. Set the middle gray value to compensate the global exposure of the scene. Type has two options. Progressive animates the auto exposure. Fixed does not animate it. Speed up and speed down. Set the adaptation speed from a dark to a light and from light to a dark environment. The bloom effect makes bright areas in your image glow. Intensity Set the strength of the bloom filter. Threshold Set the level of brightness to filter out pixels under this level. Soft knee Set the gradual threshold for transitions between under and over threshold. Clamp Set the value for clamping pixels to control the bloom amount. Diffusion Set the extent of wheeling effects in a screen resolution independent fashion. Anamorphic ratio This simulates the effect of an anamorphic lens. Color Select the color of the tint of a bloom filter. Fast mode Boosting performance by lowering the bloom effect quality. Texture Select a dirtness texture to add smudges or dust to the lens. Intensity Set the amount of lens dirtiness. The chromatic aberration effect splits color along boundaries in the image into the red, green and blue channels. Spectral loot Select the texture used for a custom fringing color. When it's empty, the default texture is used. Intensity Set the strength of the chromatic aberration effect. Fast mode It is recommended where possible, however, it is not as smooth as the regular mode. The color grading effect alters or corrects the color and luminance of the final image. It comes with three modes. Low definition range. It's ideal for lower end platforms. High definition range. Ideal for platforms that supports HDR rendering. External. For use with custom 3D LUTs authored in external software. Tone mapping. Its most common purpose is to make an image with a low dynamic range appear to have a higher range of colors. White balance allows you to adjust the overall tint and temperature of your image. Tone Post exposure Set the value for the overall exposure of the scene. Color filter Select the color for the tint of the render. Hue shift Adjust the hue of all colors. Saturation Adjust the intensity of all colors. Contrast Adjust the overall range of tonal values. Channel mixer is used to adjust the color balance of your image. Trackballs Use them to perform three-way color grading. Adjust the position of the point on the trackball to shift the hue of the image towards that color in each tonal range. Each trackball affects different ranges within the image. Adjust the slider under the trackball to offset the color lightness of that range. Grading curves Grading curves allows you to adjust specific ranges in hue, saturation or luminosity. You can adjust the curves on the 8 available graphs to achieve effects such as specific hue replacement or desaturating certain luminosities. The depth of field effect blurs the background of your image while the objects in the foreground stay in focus. This simulates the focal properties of the real-world camera lens. Focus distance Set the distance to the point of focus. Aperture Set the ratio of the aperture. Focal length Set the distance between the lens and the field. Max blur size. This setting determines the maximum radius of bokeh effect. The grain effect overlays film noise onto your game. Colored. Enable this checkbox to use colored grain. 
Intensity Controls grain strength Size Set the value of grain particle size Luminance Contribution Set the value to control the noisiness response curve. This value is based on the scene luminance. The lens distortion effect simulates distortion caused by the shape of the real-world camera lens. Intensity Set the value for the total distortion amount. X and Y multiplier Set the intensity multiplier on the corresponding axis. Center X and Y Set the distortion center point for corresponding axis. Scale Set the value for global screen scaling. Motion blur The motion blur effect blurs the image in the direction of the camera movement. Shutter angle Set the angle of the rotary shutter. Sample count Set the value of the amount of sample points. The screen space reflection effect creates subtle reflections that simulate wet floor surfaces or puddles. It reflects both static and dynamic game objects to create realistic reflections. Preset Select the quality preset from the drop-down. Use the custom option to fine-tune the quality. Maximum match distance Set the maximum distance to draw reflections in the scene. Distance fade. Set the value for the distance to fade reflection close to the near plane. This is useful to hide common artifacts. Vignette. Set the value to fade the reflections close to the screen edges. The vignette effect darkens the edges of an image. The vignette effect in the post-processing stack has two modes. Classic and Mask. Classic mode has parametric controls for the position, shape and the intensity of the vignette. Color set the color. Center set the vignette center point. Intensity set the amount of vignetting on the screen. Smoothness set the smoothness of the vignette borders. Roundness set the value to round the vignette. Rounded if checked the vignette is perfectly round. Masked mode uses a custom texture mask and multiplies it over the scene to create a vignette effect. Color Set the color of the vignette. Mask Select black and white mask to use as a vignette. Opacity Set the mask opacity value. To learn more about light mapping in Unity, check out our video on basics of light mapping. And that pretty much concludes this video. Whatever game you're making, Mixel Studio has a solution. From stylized low-poly environments to realistic AAA scenes. So, don't forget to check out Mixel page on the Unity Asset Store by using link in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.